we are okay. As in, we are okay that you just punched a hole through my steel plated heart, okay? I picked this book up because there was an alcoholic on YouTube who would just not stop gushing about it. Hey, it turns out word of mouth really does work. Reading this book after Catcher in the Rye is like double oof. Ooh. It's just the season, guys. Maybe it'll get better when I can feel my toes again. Quick disclaimer, if I'm gonna read a book, I'm sure as hell gonna discuss it. And the only way I can do that is if there are spoilers up the ass. So prepare your body. So what's this book about? The story starts with Marin in her college dorm. Everyone's going home for the holidays and it's basically dead quiet. Mabel is Marin's best friend from back home. She's gonna come visit for a few days and then go back. So Marin's gonna be alone again after that until basically when school starts back up again. Mabel's trying really hard to convince Marin to come back home with her, but for some reason, Marin just can't do it. The book itself is split into two timelines. One, the current time where Marin and Mabel are spending the time in the dorms in New York, and two, the summer before this in California. This book really explores the journey of a girl who didn't have much to begin with and she loses what little she did have. My thoughts. There are so many things I appreciate about this book. And thank you so much to Cindy who recommended it because I probably would have never picked it up on my own. Not because I hated the cover or anything, I actually really love the cover. It just wasn't one of those books that's like constantly being pushed down your throat by like fierce reads or like book Twitter, which I don't understand why. Like I completely get why there's a gold sticker on the front of this. This book manages to pretty much do everything right on a technical level as well as an artistic one. For the technical stuff, there are two that really pop up in my mind. One, show don't tell, and two, trust your audience. I swear I've read so many books where it goes like, hi, I'm your new roommate. Hey, I'm gay. Oh, okay, cool. What kind of music do you like to listen to? Over the Rainbow, It's Raining Men, YMCA, you know, the classics. Oh, by the way, do you want some Skittles? Oh yes, please. We're at a point, I think, where we're trying to include more characters that are LGBTQ into books and movies and such. And the characters inside those stories are really accepting, which is great. But it also seems like the authors are making it their highest priority to make sure that the first thing you know about these people is that they're gay. Attention, everyone. May I have your attention, please? This character is gay. This one right here, he's gay. G-A-Y. Gay. Not straight. Has everyone got that? Again, he is gay. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so I really appreciate and respect Nina LaCour for writing her characters the way she did. Like when Mabel comes to visit Marin, we don't get this huge exposition dump about like, oh, they were children in the schoolyard playing tag together. Cause it would have been so easy for so many authors to write that way. But no, she just shows up and shows that she can pick up on the main character's ticks and tones and things. Like when Marin asks her to keep talking about her school life, her art history class, she does without question, knowing that this is gonna be all a part of her healing process. The author seriously just trusts you to pick up on the hints and it does double duty by also building atmosphere at the same time. One of the biggest things that stuck out to me in the book was when Mabel asked Marin to come home with her for the holidays. She had this room set up, her parents were 100% okay with it, and they would have even paid for the flight. It's completely primed for Marin to just say yes. If this was written by a less skilled author, my cynical ass would have been just like, bitch, pack up your shit. Here, I'll help. I'll help, okay? I just found it so crazy with the way the setting was built and you feel the weight of everything around you that you know that there's a reason why she can't just say yes to this. Like, I wasn't sure what it was, but I just knew something was going on. Seriously, not an easy thing to pull off. If that didn't work, I think I would have been frustrated really early on. What can I say? I'm a picky reader. But serious props to the author. She brings the relationship of Marin and Mabel out in a very gentle, way, but it doesn't come out of left field because you get the hints from the way they talk to each other. Also, her grief with her grandfather was so raw and wonderfully written. It's like a terrifying slow burn that I wish I had the skills for. She was able to make the small things feel like the big things. I remember just loving these little details about like Marin going into the pottery shop and I don't really know how, but she made something as simple as like chili and cornbread feel like it was turkey on Thanksgiving. Probably one of the most favorite things I had about this book was the way the author wove together the two timelines. Sorry girl on the train, you did not deserve Emily Blunt. Usually the problem I have with two timelines or two point of views is just that most of the times I get more invested in one timeline than I do the other. Like Ember in the Ashes, generally great book, 
but Maya and Elias can go jump off a cliff and I wouldn't care half as much as if Helene stubbed her toe. But the author of this book effectively uses Mabel's not understanding the entire situation to help paint the complete picture. For that, you get the Tea Leaf Awards. Yes, the most prestigious award of them all, given to you by some weirdo on YouTube. There's just so much to like about this book. There's this beginning scene where she talks about the silence of a dormitory, which is usually loud and hectic for the most part. And I was like, damn, did you just rip a scene right out of my life? I didn't stay in the dorms for winter break, but I did have only two days off Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving break. And that's not really enough time, especially if you have to travel far. So throughout my entire college career, I more or less spent Thanksgiving always in the dorms. And seriously, it just doesn't feel right. Like it's so strange to be accustomed to things like the shuffling of feet, clanging of plates and utensils, and people hurrying in and out. You go from that to like only hearing the low hum of your computer. Anyway, I can't recommend this enough. It's a seriously good book. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. Next, I'm gonna be reading Of Mice and Men. So yes, more happy and uplifting stories to come.